So this is all, it's little bits and pieces which make up your non-verbal communication that everybody is seeing and that you might not be um, seeing because you know the person in front of you is your mirror actually. <laughs> So we use our voice a lot in business, but how important is the role of nonverbal communication? Normally we say that um, over 50%, I mean, just to be broad, but over 50% of, of communication is, is nonverbal. So this gives you an idea of how important it is to master our nonverbal communication. And there's a lot of things that comes into aspect when you talk about nonverbal communication, and uh, which we can go into details uh, later on, but it is very, very important actually. So what are the most significant parts of nonverbal communication? Well, we, t we take into consideration um, the use of space, for instance. Proximix is very important, how close or how far you are with uh, standing with you know, your business partner, because some people might get offended by the distance that you're putting uh, between, between each other. It is important as well, the, the, the postures, the way you're sitting down, the way you're standing up, the use of your hand, which, which hand you're using, which side, is it the left, the right? And uh, th there's so many things um, that I is to be taken into consideration. A simple smile is, is important. You're nodding or you, you, you're approving or you're disapproving um, what is being said. Um, how your client is seeing you, the way you are dressed as well, is very important. It is part of your nonverbal communication because this is what we see when, we first, when you first enter the room. This is what you see. So this is all, it's little bits and pieces which make up your non-verbal communication that everybody is seeing and that you might not be um, seeing because you know the person in front of you is your mirror actually. So how can you read non-verbal communication? There are some signs which is very global for instance, for give you an example, somebody who's scratching his head at the back of his head, very often, not to put cliches on that, but very often it's, it's a sign of complicatedness. You know, something is very complicated or, or hard to, to bear. So before we, we go on a spree of reading nonverbal communication and say I'm a master of nonverbal communication, it is important to, to know his or her own nonverbal communication. And then you can, you can see it's like we call that a monkey image of how the person also because sometimes when you cross your legs somebody else might cross the legs because they're imitating you without realizing it so it is important to know your own first and then you can start learning about the others because it's a it's something that you keep learning you never stop learning nonverbal communication so i believe but what if your nonverbal communication goes unrecognized it can go unrecognized because some people doesn't pay attention uh, to nonverbal communication. But I think when something really bad or really great happens that stands out, this is when you notice, for instance, you know, why even if you're not a guru in, in nonverbal communication, but when somebody is, is doing something that offends you, you see it, or something that pleases you, you see it. If, if I give you an example, when you meet somebody for the first time in terms of relationship, even if in a personal scope, you see a girl or you see a, a man, it's the first thing that comes to mind is the way that person looks. And so this is, is the nonverbal communication before uh, you start talking about uh, what she or he likes. It's very important because we, we talk about nonverbal communication and we all want to know how to master it for, for business and, and okay, am I crossing my arm? That means this, I'm, I'm letting my hand free, I'm using my left hand. So there's a lot of cliches, but I, I, I think if you can start practicing, for instance, a good practice is when you watch TV and you see somebody uh, getting interviewed, for instance, and the use of, not space, because most of the time they're sitting down or they're standing up, but the use of their hand or something that is very touchy. For instance, when something touched you deep inside, what do you do as you personally? What do you do? Do you just stand there, you don't care, or you, know, you, you touch a, a part of you? And, and this is a good exercise that you know, people who is in a couple or who works together very, very closely will identify. You don't necessarily put a label on it, but you see that when he or she gets angry, he might do this, he might do that, or he stands up, or he, he rubs his hand, or he crosses his arms. So, so this is part of identifying, you know, getting to know yours, getting to know the nonverbal communication of the people around you before you go around and start judging your clients and, and judging your bosses, etc., etc. How can you build customer loyalty with your clients through body language and facial expressions? 
if you go, for instance, I'll give you an example. If you go, if I come to your bank and, uh, and I ask for a service and nobody is paying attention to me, cannot look at me or just saying, okay, go and fill in this paper over there and so on and so forth, nonverbal communication is zero. You, must ha you may have the best product, but you know, I mean, it's a competitive world. You're not the only one who's got the best product. So if it's not you, I'm going to go elsewhere. So in the sense, this nonverbal communication got me to leave your place or got me to stay in your place because you know you, you took care of me, you nurtured me. Well, thank you so much for joining us today in the studio and speaking on this topic. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you at home for watching. Don't forget to click back for more interviews like this.